Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Age Discriminator, who says, Do I need a lawyer for an age discrimination lawsuit? And before we do dive into this first story, I just want to give you a warning that the story does talk about stalking behavior. So if you would like to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are down in the description below and along the timeline. Thank you. Please hear me out. I met up with a guy from Plenty of Fish. He seemed normal when we were talking, so I meet him at the restaurant and there is an obviously much older man, the 30-year-old that he claimed to be. I sat down and I told him I was under the assumption he was younger. He had told me he was younger. He claimed that they were older pictures and that it must have been a typo, although his profile also said 30, and that he was actually 45 years old. I told him I was not interested in someone almost 20 years older than me, and I wished him well. He began to raise his voice a little, saying he has already ordered a dish and wine for me, and I needed to sit down and eat with him. I went to the bartender and gave a brief explanation of what happened, and the manager walked me to my car while the bartender stayed with the guy to make sure he didn't follow me. I went about my merry way for a couple of months before I was served at work with papers stating I was being sued. I called the attorney listed to verify and he confirmed that they were real. He was a client and I was being sued the cost of the entire dinner and his travel expenses because I used his age as a discrimination, which was also illegal. I made the mistake of giving him my last name, which is not common, and he found my employer on Facebook. Everything has since been locked down or deleted. Now again, hear me out. I know this will get thrown out. I'm fully aware he's crazy. Do I need to get a lawyer for this? Money has been tight and I'm paying off student loans galore. Is it possible to walk into the courtroom and represent myself and not be completely murdered by their attorney? And any and all advice is so completely welcome. And this was on a legal advice subreddit and a commenter did reply with a lengthy reply which we'll cover in a moment which gives information about what this guy was talking about. I'm just thinking what is this guy playing at? I wonder how many other people he may have done this to. Like two months later and then you get served. I'm not sure how long the, the process of serving someone takes anyway but and the fact that when you turned up at the restaurant he said he already ordered your food and wine for you and that you have to sit down with him. I was like, oof, that's odd behavior. But now we're going to cover that comment, which said something like detrimental reliance. I'm out of all this money based on a promise you made that you didn't keep. I relied on your promise to my detriment. Is an equitable claim, a type of claim for damages or relief not based in ordinary principles of law. No showing a date under ordinary circumstances wouldn't give rise to a detrimental reliance claim under circumstances where it was even conceivable. It would be limited to things she knew about ahead of time, like if there was substantial travel expenses involved for him. Him ordering food or wine without her knowing about it isn't going to be recoverable, even if it was a $5,000 bottle of wine. As said, it's baked into the whole concept of dating that no one is required to participate or remain in a situation that makes them uncomfortable. So like maybe for a no-show, but it's a stretch. Show up, ew, later bro, is within the scope of normal dating procedure. But even so, of the many rules involved in equitable claims, one of them is to get equity, one must do equity. The reason for the failure can't be rooted in something you did in bad faith. Even if there was some substance behind a claim for damages for a ruined date, he misrepresented his age by 15 years. That's bad faith right there. Detrimental reliance or quasi-contract or promissory estoppel is more appropriate for a situation where a unilateral promise is made, which is unenforceable under most circumstances, with the intent to get the other person to do or not do something. It doesn't matter if it was inadvertent or not malicious. The promiser has to know the promisee would suffer some detriment or change of circumstance if the promisee relies on the promise. Your employer tells you that you've been with the company long enough that whenever you decide to retire, you'll get half your pay for the rest of your life. You retire and after a couple of months, the check stopped coming. The promise was unilateral, so it's unenforceable under an ordinary legal claim. 
but you wouldn't have retired if the promise hadn't been made, and your employer knows that. The damage to you isn't the loss of a pension, since that was never enforceable, it's the loss of a job. So the employer should make good on a promise for a reasonable time while you look for a new job. Then OP came back in to update their post, which said, First, thank you all so, so much for the kind words and suggestions. I even saw that it made best of legal advice and was floored by the overwhelming support from both communities. Unfortunately, this update has good and bad in it. I did find an attorney to help me. I made an appointment and tearfully explained my situation, begging him to let me make payments as I could only afford such and such amount, but I could sell my car if needed. Not sure if it was because of the holidays or he just wanted me out of his office. I kid, he was so nice and understanding, but he told me not to worry about it and I could make a donation or volunteer at a charity. He agreed to start off with a very strongly worded letter and we would keep in contact from there to see what happened. The bad. I don't want to go into much detail just in case, but law enforcement is now involved. I am okay and unharmed, that's all that matters. What I am able to give out due to it being reported on was after having to change my phone number. He attempted to show up at my apartment and waved a gun at security when they told him they wouldn't let him in. However, there is now another investigation. He may be linked to another criminal case in my area. Again, thank you all for the kind words and support. Just wanted to give you guys some closure while I was getting mine. Edit. I want to add an answer to a big question I left out previously because I was unsure if I should have disclosed it. Previously, the amount of damages he was looking at originally was over 6.5K. He claims the cost of dinner was $250. It was at a freaking restaurant that rhymes with Olive Darden. (laughs) His gas guzzler of a car at $150 for mileage. But the best was when we were talking. I'd mentioned I wanted to go to South Africa and he allegedly started buying the works for me. Shrug. But seriously, I know I've tried to use some humor in this, but I'm a little broken inside. I'll be starting therapy soon because it has given me horrible panic attacks and I've just been trying to cope with how I could have been a statistic. My word, that is so incredibly scary for Opie and just scary in general, really. Just trying to go out on a date and enjoy your life and then you get met with this absolute batshit level craziness. And not surprising, really, there was many comments below that relating to seeing this kind of crazy behavior. And I'm incredibly glad the staff in that place looked after OP because the way OP explained the first initial meetup when she sat down and, you know, they had this discussion about age and then he said, well, I've ordered you food. You need to sit down and eat with me. That sounds really scary to be dealing with. Meeting a stranger and they're already talking to you like that and it only showed in the update how far this person was willing to go. But once again, I'm very glad to hear that OP is safe. By the sounds of it, with the other investigation going on with this person, sounds like he's a bad dude. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Playful Food, who says dad left us and a decade later wants to reconcile because he has cancer. Am I wrong to be angry? My dad left us and started a new family when I was 14. This had a profound impact on myself and my family. Life as a child of a single parent was hard as you can imagine. The government benefits was hardly enough to support three kids. We lived below the poverty line. My mum became an alcoholic. I started working as soon as I legally could to help with the finances. I sacrificed my childhood so that there was electricity and gas in the house. I started failing at school and paid out of my own pocket to hire a tutor. I went to university locally even though I had better offers elsewhere. I have a good and stable career now. My family lives with me but I feel they are not respecting me. Recently, my dad got in touch with my younger sister through Facebook. She met up with him and brought him back to my home. He didn't apologize for the pain he put me through. He made it all about himself and tried to gain sympathy with his plight. Am I the arsehole for not caring and not wanting him in my life? I told him to leave. My mother and sister tried to defend him. We got into an argument and I threatened to evict my own family. We have not talked for days and my home had become hostile. What should I do? Now you've already said how much you've sacrificed already because of your parents' failings. 
and you have a simple boundary of that you don't want your father in your life. So for your sister to then bring him home is breaking that boundary and then they're trying to defend him. You know, it's just not on. You're not saying that they can't have a relationship with them if, if that's what they want, you know, more power to them. But you don't want him in your home, which is totally understandable. And I know it sounds harsh, but if they disrespect that, then whatever comes from that will be the consequences of their own actions. We've said it many times before in these stories. But Throwaway says you're completely justified in asking him to leave and in being angry. They can have a relationship with him if they want, but they shouldn't bring him to your home without your permission. Trilobite says assholes are assholes. Assholes with cancer are still assholes. Assholes who die are still assholes. There's a tendency when people pass away or become sick for others to feel like they should overlook bad behavior or reconcile just because the person is going through a hard time or we might not get another chance. No, if he wanted to reconcile, he should have done it before he needed something. He has cancer and as with any serious medical condition, there's a huge strain on both financial and emotional fronts. He only came back because he wants your help, probably with both the above. He's not interested in reconciling for your sake or even because he wants to make amends. Because if that were the case, then he wouldn't have been only focusing on himself. He's back in your life because he wants something from you. Your mum and sister, and probably you as well, have been wishing your dad was a different person for the last 10 years. Now he's showing up and acting like that's the case. Like he wants to be a part of their lives again. Like many people offered the thing they dream and wish for. Your mum and sis are willing to suspend their doubts and go along with it. The reason they are so mad at you is because you are bursting the bubble of their dream with your refusal to ignore the reality of what your father has done. You can't force them not to have a relationship with him, but you can and should set boundaries for the house that you own slash pay for. If you don't want him there, then they just have to visit with him elsewhere. You will respect their desire to see him, but they should also respect your desire not to see him. That is a perfectly reasonable compromise under the circumstances. Tempest says, it's your home, it's your choice, what happens there and who is allowed to stay there. You don't owe anything to the man that caused you nothing but pain and suffering and took your childhood away from you. You could always have a conversation with him, away from the rest of your family and see if he realizes what he's put you all through and is apologetic. Some people do have a change of heart, others don't. Regardless, you absolutely have a right to be angry you don't have to forgive him. Kaki says no. You're perfectly justified in your response. Explain as clearly as you can your feelings to your family. If they want to see him, then that's not something you should evict them over, as they'll have their own feelings and opinions towards him and whether they want to reconcile. But if you don't want to see him or have anything to do with him, then that obviously can't take place at your house. But you said you don't feel your family are respecting you. Is that solely to do with the situation or is there more to it? which OP responds in the fact that he can just walk back into our lives without an explanation. My family is financially dependent on me. I feel like what I have done and what I went through is just being tossed aside. I don't want him in our lives. There are things that irritate me now, such as eating dinner alone. I feel like I'm being ghosted. And one final comment from Apple Lark who says, yeah, fuck him. I grew up the same way and when my father tried to contact me 15 years later, I told him to pound sand. I have no sympathy nor will I ever regret rejecting him. Explain to your siblings very clearly the sacrifices you made to help the family. Tell them he is never welcomed at your home nor should they provide him with any information about you. If they wish to form a connection they can do it away from you and your home. I would look him right in the face and tell him that he'd never contact you or step foot on your property. Yeah and again I totally agree with most of those comments. The only reason I would ever say to visit him and you know, this is not for forgiveness or anything like that. You never have to forgive him. Is that if you personally want any closure out of this, if it will help you moving forward. As I said, once you've got that information from him, you don't have to see him again, but this person has obviously caused you a lot of pain. And if you can get any sort of closure or help moving forward from this, then I think you deserve that. So then OP came in with their update, which says you guys are right. I can't force my family to accept my views of no contact with my father. I resent this man so much. I can't stand the sight of him. After I posted yesterday, I was invited to have dinner with my family. To no one's surprise, my dad and his new family were there. I picked out the two most expensive dishes on the menu and we had a chat. 
I heard his thoughts on the matter of being an absent father, but I didn't bring up any of our hardships. My mother and sister made more attempts to make me forgive him. I did. I forgave him, but that doesn't mean I need to have a relationship with him anymore. Again, my family protested that I'm being cruel and heartless. I'm not. Many people survive cancer and his lung cancer is in the early stages. I told them I would not be present at any family events if he was there. My sister shouted at me claiming, he is our dad you arsehole. Yes, he is. To which I replied that he needs to take over his responsibilities as a father. I told them I'd cancelled the tenancy on the house and we need to move out by the end of this month. My sisters need to return the iPhones that are on contract as I am cancelling those. Driving lessons will be cancelled, gym membership will be cancelled, subscription services will be cancelled and everything else that I pay for. These are dad's responsibilities now. Ate my dinner and left them with a bill as a little act of petty revenge. I've been staying with my girlfriend and have not answered any texts and calls from them. I need a break. I'm done. I'm done taking over dad's role. I'm done with the financial responsibilities or acting as the parent. I'm 25 and I need to live my own life now. I don't think this will burn bridges. It's just a wake-up call for them. Edit. I'm not going to ghost or abandon them. They need to become independent now. Edit. I'm reading all the comments. I know I acted like a jerk. I just need some time to collect my thoughts. I might update later. And that was the final update, I'm afraid. And I'm not sure who called OP a jerk in this, but I didn't feel like there was a jerk for walking out of this situation at all. You know, they're trying to force him to have a relationship with someone who treated them awfully in the past. And then they're expecting him to continue to pay for all these luxuries for them, like the phones and the gym memberships and stuff. I mean... It just sounded like the guy needed a break out of the situation, 25 years old and all that responsibility. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to one more story. And our next story comes from Graydon12 who says, Am I the arsehole for kicking my sister out on Thanksgiving after she repeatedly woke the baby? This happened last week and my mum and sister are still upset. My wife gave birth a month ago. We usually do Thanksgiving at my mum's house, but with the new baby, we decided to do it at our house this year, with mum and sister coming over early to cook. Baby had a terrible night the night before Thanksgiving. When my mum and sister came over to cook, I warned them that baby and wife were finally sleeping, so please be quiet. My sister repeatedly made noise and woke up baby multiple times. I kept warning her. She said she wasn't trying to make a lot of noise and was just cooking and was trying to be as quiet as she could. By the third time, my wife was in tears and so was baby. My wife flipped and demanded I get everyone out of the house. I didn't want to kick my mum out, but since sister was the one making the noise, I told her to just leave before my wife lost it more. She argued with me, but eventually left and my mum went with her. Ended up going to a restaurant to eat. We ordered takeout and a lot of uncooked food went to waste. Wife is still upset because she thinks they should have been more considerate of baby and baby's first Thanksgiving was ruined. Mum and sister are upset because they claim they were being as quiet as they could and we kicked them out anyway. And we're going to start straight away in the comments with Mabelisms who says you're the arsehole for inviting people to cook Thanksgiving dinner at your house with an infant and expecting them to make zero noise. Like literally, what the hell? RB1327 says, You're the arsehole and your wife is ridiculous if she actually said baby's first Thanksgiving was ruined. This is a one-month-old infant and it barely knows anything. You should not have offered to host at all with a newborn in your home. You should not have asked people to come over early to cook and then hassled them about making noise in the kitchen. The next commenter quotes the story and says, The baby is less than a month old. They literally cannot process faces yet, much less solid food. Get over yourselves. Thanksgiving requires noise. Having company makes noise. Demanding you host and that everyone walk on eggshells for your baby is untenable. Throwing out your family and wasting food is awful. This is a situation entirely of your own creation and bad choices, which might be partially due to being new parents and lacking sleep, but not enough to spare you that you're the arsehole. Walnut with Teeth says, I'd have to say you're the arsehole. You invited people to your house to cook with a four-week-old in the house and a wife who is four weeks postpartum with all the sleep deprivation and hormone fluctuations that entails. 
Baby won't remember Thanksgiving. Baby won't even remember next year's Thanksgiving. Cooking is a noisy pastime. It'd have been better going to your mum's with a new baby in tow and then leaving when you needed to. All the comments mentioning about, you know, baby won't mention Thanksgiving, which, you know, obviously, but I've just, it just gave me this picture in my head of like some 10 year old child going like, bloody hell, do you remember my first Thanksgiving? You noisy lot. <laughs> Shot Sprinkles 6930 says you're the arsehole and so is your wife. I just can't figure out which one is worse. They came over to cook Thanksgiving dinner for all of you. I don't know how quiet you think this would be, but why invite anyone over in that case? This simply tells me that you nor your wife has ever cooked a big meal before or any meal due to it's not a real quiet time. Food went wasted because of you and your wife. I'm on your sister and mother's side. And one more comment from Ambitious Zucchini who says you're the asshole, but only because this was a terrible idea to begin with. You and your wife shouldn't have had a party with a newborn and instead of kicking them out, should have come up with a new idea for dinner yourselves. Cooking is loud and holidays are for family get-togethers where talking is expected. Now, what do you guys make of this situation? It seemed like it was an overwhelming you're the asshole. Maybe you have a different opinion on the matter. Let me know in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the stories. Your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.